We have studied chapter 1 to 8. Up to now, we mainly focus on the motion of a single object. We use a model of particle to represent the object in translational motion. But in real world, an object is not a theoretical point without spatial extension. A real object is made up of many, many tiny particles. So, we use the knowledge we have learned to investigate the system which includes two or more bodies. This is what we are going to do in chapter 9 and the following chapters. For two object systems, the action between the object is collision. So we talk about the concept of momentum and the law of, of conservation of momentum. Then we talk about the collision and impulse. For extended body as being made up of many tiny particles, we define center of mass so that we can use the particle model to investigate its translational motion behavior again. Furthermore, we talk about the systems of variable mass. Section 1. Momentum and its relation to force. The momentum of an object is defined as the product of the mass and its velocity, p equal to mv. According to this definition, a fast-moving car has more momentum than a slow-moving car of the same mass. And a heavy truck has more momentum than a small car moving with the same speed. The more momentum an object has, the harder it is to stop it, and the greater effort it will be if it is brought to rest by collision. Of course, a force is required to change the momentum of an object, whether it is to increase the momentum, to decrease it, or to change its direction. The relation between momentum and force. We know the statement of Newton's second law is originally as follows. The rate of change in momentum of an object is equal to the net force applied to it, F equals to the derivative of momentum P with respect to time T equals to dmv dt. If we multiply dt at both sides, we have f dt equals to dp. We integrate this equation at both sides, we have f dt integrate from ti to tf is the force accumulated with time from initial time moment ti to the final moment tf equals to pf minus pi equals the change of the momentum for constant mass we have f equals to ma we got familiar with this equation long, long ago. In order to have a clear understanding of the relation between force and momentum, let's take a look at this example of car wash. Water leaves a hose at a rate of 1.5 kg per second 
with a speed of 20 meters per second and is aimed at the side of a car which stops it. We ignore any splashing back. What is the force exerted by the water on the car? We take the x direction positive to the right. In each second, water with a momentum of px equals to mvx equals to 1.5 kilogram times 20 meter per second equals to 30 kilogram meter per second is brought to rest at the moment it hits the car. The magnitude of the force that the car must exert to change the momentum of the water by this amount is F equals to delta P over delta T equals to P final minus P initial divided by the time duration equals to 0 minus 30 kilogram meter per second divided by 1.0 second equals to minus 30 newton. The car exerts a force of 30 newton to the left to stop the water. So the water exerts a force of 30 newton on the car to the right. Section 2. Conservation of Momentum This is the definition of system. A system includes a number of objects which we are interested. For system, forces can be categorized to two types. Internal force means that Objects within the system exert forces on other objects in the system. External force means objects outside the system exert forces on objects in the system. In this diagram, we have a system consists of two particles, M1 and M2. The uh, capital letter F1 is the external force exerted on mass M1. The lowercase F1 is the internal force exerted by the M2 to M1. And the F2 in capital letter is the external force exerted on M2 and the lowercase f2 is a force exerted by m1 to m2. So according to Newton's second law, we have f1 plus f1 equals to a change rate of the momentum p1. For m2, we have f2 plus f2 equals to dp2 dt. If we make the addition of these equations at both sides, because the internal force F1 and F2 appears with same magnitude but just opposite direction, they cancel out with each other. So the external force F1 plus F2 equals to the change rate of the momentum of the system. For a system containing any interacting particles by Newton's third law, the internal forces occur in pairs. If one particle exerts a force on a second particle, the second exerts an equal and opposite force on the first one. Therefore, internal force Fij sigma 
equals to zero. It means that all the internal forces cancel out with each other. The summation of the external force is the net external force equals to the change rate of the total momentum of the system. The equation of motion for particle I is Fi external plus Fi internal equals to the change rate of momentum Pi with respect to time t. For the whole system, the sigma Fi external plus sigma Fi internal equals to sigma dPi dt. First, we make a summation of the momentum for all the all particles. And then, to do the derivative with time t, because the internal forces cancel out with each other, we have the net external force equals to the change rate of the total momentum of the system. From the above equation, we find that if the net external force equal to zero, then the derivative of the total momentum dp with dt equals to zero. It means the total momentum of the system keep a constant. This is the so-called conservation law of momentum. It reads as when the net external force on a system is zero, the total momentum remains constant. Or if no net external force acts on a particle system, total momentum of system cannot change. Let's make a clear points of this conservation law. First, the validity conditions for this conservation law. The sigma f external equals to zero is the validity condition, but sometimes when the external force is much less than the internal force, we can use this conservation law of momentum to solve some problem. Like in the case of collision, strike, explosion, the nerve forces can be neglected. Two, we have a conclusion. Only external force can change the state of motion of a system. Three, if a component of net external force on a system along an axis is zero, the component of momentum of the system along that axis does not change. It means that we can apply the conservation law of momentum to a single axis. Four. The conservation law of momentum is only suitable for inertial reference frame. Five, if a net external force acts on a system, 
then the law of conservation momentum will not apply. But if we redefine the system so as to include the objects exerting these forces, then the conservation momentum can apply. For example, if we take a falling rock as our system, its momentum does not conserve. Since the force of gravity by the Earth is acting on it, however, if we include the Earth in the system, the total momentum of rock plus Earth is conserved. Let me read the problem for you. A cannon mounted on wheels of mass arm shoots a shell of mass arm with muscle velocity of v at an angle theta above the horizontal. Please find the horizontal recoil speed v of the cannon. Neglect the friction. We take the ground of the Earth as the initial reference frame, and we set the coordinate this way. The positive x-direction is to the right, because the given velocity of the shell is muzzle velocity. It is the velocity with respect to the cannon, so the velocity of the shell respect to the ground is u equals to muzzle velocity of the shell plus the horizontal recoil speed v of the cannon. The x component u x can be expressed by v cosine theta minus v because there is no external force adding on the system consists of the shell and cannon. We apply the conservation law of momentum in the x direction. We have the equation minus mv plus m times v cosine theta minus v equals to zero. We solve this equation and then we find the recoil speed v equals to m over m plus m times v cosine theta.